What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be making this really cool procedural disintegration effect in geometry nodes using the new simulation nodes that are coming in Blender 3.5. Just like last time, if you guys want to get the 3.5 alpha branch that already includes these, there's a link in the description below. You just click on that and then download the 3.5 geometry node simulation branch right here. So with that done, I've just got a new blend file here. And just like last time, the first thing I'm gonna do is save my file. Because again, this is an alpha branch and so it is very unstable. So I'm gonna start out by deleting the default cube and then I'm gonna add in both a Suzanne head and an empty sphere. I'll move this empty over just a little bit click back onto Suzanne, geometry nodes, and add a new geometry node modifier. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna use this empty to control sort of like what part of Suzanne gets disintegrated. So I'm gonna shift A and add in a mesh boolean. Plug that in there. Then you can just grab your empty from up there and I'll plug my object input slot into my group input so I can switch it in the future if I want to. Switch this to relative and just slide it up here. Now I'm gonna add in an icosphere and a transform node. Plug the icosphere into there, then just plug all of these transform values from your object info into the transform node. Once you've got that, you can plug this geometry into the second mesh slot and check hole tolerant. Now you can see our empty is booleaning our Suzanne head. And if you add in a few more subdivisions, that'll make it look a little bit cleaner. So the next thing we have to do is shift A, grab a distribute points on faces node then plug our boolean mesh into the mesh slot shift a and grab a geometry proximity node see i only want to distribute points on the faces that are basically where suzanne just got like disintegrated so all these little triangles here so what i'm going to do is just find the distance from each point because that'll act like smooth shading sort of to the icosphere, which we can't see, but is still there. And so if I add in a math node set to less than, I can use this distance value and plug this into the selection. And as long as I set this to something really, really small, like 0 0.0001, then we can plug this distribute points on faces node into our output and you can crank up the density to see it more, but we're only distributing points now on the faces that we want to. So with that, we can actually add in our simulation input node and our simulation output node now. Then shift A and like last time, we're gonna use a join geometry node. Plug this in here and alt shift click to plug this simulation output into your group output. And I'm just going to slide these over because we're going to need a lot of space if we can. So now we can grab a set position node. So the first thing I want to do is I want to fire each of these points away, basically in the direction of the normal of the face that they're spawned on. Now, just like last time, the first thing I have to do is add a store named attribute in here, set it to vector, and I'm going to name it to vel. And I'm going to grab an attribute node, set it to vector as well, name it to the same thing, and plug this both into the offset and into the value slot on the store named attribute. Now, by just modifying this attribute between each frame, it'll make sure that our points have sort of like inertia and velocity as the simulation goes on. So I'm going to shift right click actually to just add in a junction there. Shift A, grab a vector math node, set that to add, and you're just going to want to plug the normal into the second slot, 
Shift D and normalize. And then again, you're gonna wanna add in a scale node. Now I wanna add in a little bit of randomness. I don't want it to be completely uniform for each particle. So I'm gonna Shift A, grab a random value node and an index node. Just plug that into the seed and then plug this into the scale. And you can adjust these values as you like, but I've found values of 0 0.005 and 0 0.02 to work pretty well. Now, if you come down here to the bottom, you can click horizontal split to add in a new window. Switch this to a timeline editor. And now if we click play, you'll see our points are sort of just shot out of all the faces. Now, another thing we can do is add in a scene time node and plug the frame value into the seed on our distribute points on faces node. So now if we reset it, you'll see we get much more of like a random cloud looking effect. So I'm gonna distort this with some noise to make it look a lot better. But before we do that, I wanna come over here and I wanna add a set point radius node in here. And I wanna add a set point radius node right here between the distribute points and the join geometry nodes. I'm gonna use this so that our points basically get smaller with age. And to do that, it's a very simple setup. We just need a math node and a radius node. Set it to subtract on the math node. Now you can just plug this radius output into the top slot. And I'm gonna subtract 0 0.002 from the radius each frame. So we can plug that into the set point radius. And then I'm gonna set my initial point radius to 0 0.08. And these will look quite large right now, but don't worry, we're gonna fix that in a sec. So if you hit play, you can see now the points get a lot smaller, but then they get a lot bigger. And that's because the radius value can be negative. Blender only cares about the absolute value. So I'm gonna add in a delete geometry node duplicate this math node, set this to less than, plug the value output into here, and then set this threshold to something like 0 0.01. And now whenever the point gets to a certain radius, it will just delete it. And this has two benefits. It both looks nice and it actually saves you a lot of computation power if you're using a lot of points. Now to make this look pretty, I'm gonna add in a set point radius node over here, grab my radius node again, and another math node. Just set this to divide, and then I'm gonna divide by something like 30 maybe. And yeah, now you can see we have much more of just like a tiny cloud of points. You can make these a little bit larger if you like. And you can actually grab a group input node as well so that you can control this in the future. And yeah, that looks pretty good for now. But like I was mentioning earlier, we're going to want to add some noise distortion to this. So to do that, you can just shift D, duplicate this add node, slide it down a little bit. And then I'm going to shift A, add a noise texture and a scene time node and a math node. Now we can plug the seconds value into this math node, set this to divide, divide by two, set our noise texture to 4D, and plug this here into the W slot. I found this gives a really nice evolution look, but based on the scale of your effect, you're gonna wanna adjust this divide value because obviously at smaller scales, you're gonna have a lot more quick distortion and at larger scales, it's gonna be much more slow. And Now I'm gonna grab this vector math node again, set all my bottom values to 0.5, plug the color into the top slot, and then again, I'm gonna give myself a scale node here, plug that in there, plug this into here, and I'm gonna set this scale value to something like 0.03, and if I press play now, you'll see it doesn't look too great. And that is because our scale value is set way too large. I like something around one-ish, give or take, for this scale of an object. 
And now you can see that looks a whole lot better. I think for demonstration purposes right now, I'm gonna set my point radius to something a lot larger, just so you can sort of see the motion a lot better. And if we actually add in a join geometry way over here at the end, and plug in our booleaned mesh from earlier, you'll see how the effect really looks. And you will have to fidget with this W value, unfortunately, because sometimes, as you can see here, it ends up throwing points back through Suzanne a lot. You can actually use the reflection and collision setup that we built in the last video to make the points just bounce off of Suzanne if you like. I'm not gonna do that just because I like this effect to work a little bit quicker, but that is 100% a possible use of that effect from the last video. I'll put a link up in like the corner or at the end of the video if you wanna click on that. But I'm just going to shift D on this math node, switch it to add, and then I'll just fidget with my seed value until I get something that I really like. Now that looks pretty good to me. So now the last thing I'm gonna do is just here at the end, I'm gonna add a regular old store named attribute node and a set material node. I'll plug my group input into the material slot here. And then I'm gonna plug my radius value directly into the store named attribute. Save this as something like PR for point radius. And then I'm gonna come back to my distribute points on faces node add in a group input, plug this value here into the density. Then we can actually hop over into shading real quick and I'll show you one quick trick that you can use in your shading editor. Switch over to rendered view, give Suzanne a new material, then come down here to the material slot and add another one. Now I wanna keep Suzanne as material one and then I'm gonna set all my points to material two. So I can just select that back in my interface. I'll click back onto it here. And if I set this to something like black, you'll see now we can actually separate out the points and the mesh. Now, if we bring in an attribute node and name this to the same thing we used to store our point radius value, and then use a math node, you're gonna have to multiply this by a lot because if you'll recall, our point radius is all in like values of a thousandths. So multiply this by something like a hundred, control shift click to plug that into the output. Then you can grab a color ramp and you'll see you actually have this gradient effect that you can use in a whole bunch of ways to affect your materials. I like to use it on my emission strength personally then you can set this to something like maybe blue, control shift click, and now you have this really cool like point disintegration effect. I think it looks really nice. Again, adjusting these values gives you a lot of customizability. Again, this is a completely animatable effect. As you can see here, it does look a little bit better in one direction than the other but you can do a lot of different things with this. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this, consider liking, subscribing, all that jazz. And I guess right now, happy holidays, Merry Christmas. Hope y'all have a fun and festive holiday season.